The KSHB 41 News I team has spent months looking into the systems that are meant to protect athletes in Olympic sports and how that system handles cases, including claims of sexual abuse. A government report details the center closes most of its cases because it lacks jurisdiction or for administrative reasons. I team reporter Jessica McMaster kicks off our four part series with a close examination of how the center and the system conducts investigations of sexual abuse. Some of the Olympics biggest stars. We've heard their stories as they speak out against a system they say for years has left survivors feeling silenced. It started off um, slowly um, with some touching um, and, uh, and uh, with some game playing um, that was very sexualized. At the age of 14, acrobatic gymnast Shanae Booth Stiletto moved to live with her Team USA gymnastics coach, David Reichbaum, and his family. I knew them very well from when I was very, very little. Um, they were very prominent figures uh, within the gymnastics community. Uh, they produced uh, some of the best athletes um, in America in uh, acrobatic gymnastics. Six months into Stiletto's journey, she says Reichbaum began sexually assaulting her on a daily basis while his wife slept two doors away. He would say so many different things to me. You know, if anybody finds out, you know, this could, you know, it's going to ruin everything. You're going to lose everything. Stiletto stayed silent, a child afraid to upset her mentor until she became an adult. That's when police contacted contacted Stiletto about claims they received of sexual abuse committed by Reichbaum against other athletes and herself. Stiletto told them everything. In 2012, Reichbaum was sentenced to two years in prison and stripped of his credentials with USA Gymnastics. Emails show Stiletto complained to Safe Sport, alleging that another coach gave Reichbaum access to competitive spaces, gyms, and USAG sanctioned events. But Stiletto says nothing came of her complaint. I had my, you know, my my request deflected um, over and over and over again. Top gymnasts like Allie Raceman and Simone Biles detail how USA Gymnastics and the United States Olympics and Paralympics Committee did not properly handle claims of abuse committed by disgraced Olympics doctor Larry Nasser. That's when Congress cleared the way for a new entity to investigate. The U.S. Center for Safe Sport launched in 2017. Safe Sport added Reich to its public database as permanently ineligible from Olympic sports the following year. Stiletto wants the center to do the same for the coach she says kept Reichbaum involved in the Olympics movement. She provided us with emails that show U.S. Center for Safe Sport received her complaints in 2020 about the second coach. Several months later, Stiletto received another email from the center writing it closed the case administratively and said it would reevaluate the case if more information came out. I was so enraged and ill. Um, I couldn't understand how after such a big case um, that was so important that we felt like finally landed in the proper hands of safe sport, especially in a post NASA world um, and everything that we know um, at this point, also too with the support of Congress, that there was nothing that was going to be done. The I-Team reviewed a 2020 government accountability audit into Safe Sport, which shows the center closed 82% of its cases through administrative or jurisdictional closure from 2019 to 2020. Jurisdictional closure means the claim needs to be sexual misconduct of a covered participant. Administrative closures happen when the center doesn't have enough information or when witnesses are unwilling or unable to be part of the investigation. A year after Safe Sport first contacted Stiletto, she wants to know why it closed her case. Somebody definitely needs to be looking into Safe Sport, how they practice, what they practice, what they preach, and what are the solid and tangible results. We asked the U.S. Center for Safe Sport to speak with us several times throughout the course of our investigation. Last week, they did agree to sit down with us, but backed out on the day of the interview. However, a spokesperson tells us through email that the center's made some improvements since it first launched in 2017, one of those being that they now employ more than 100 people as opposed to just having four employees when it started. Additionally, the center says it has disciplined more than 1,600 people within Olympic sports, adding that more than 3 million people have gone through safe sport training. For the I-Team, I'm Jessica McMaster, KSHB 41 News.
In part two of our four-part series, we'll talk to local athletes who accuse their coaches of sexual abuse. We'll show you the database created to notify athletes about problem coaches and staff and how some athletes think the process falls short. That story tomorrow at 6.